pause the video and try to draw the resonance structure that is suggested by this electron pushing arrow. We always start by redrawing our original picture. We always ask, where are the electrons coming from? The tail of this arrow is on the pi bond. So the electrons are coming from the pi bond, and we erase the pi bond. And at the tail of every arrow, there's always exactly one atom who is becoming less negative. Well, this is the atom at the far end of the tail, so this is the atom that is becoming less negative, which means it's becoming positive. And now we're done with the tail of the arrow, and we can erase that. Now we look at the head of the arrow, and we ask, where are the electrons going to? The head of this arrow is pointing towards the middle of the sigma bond. We've learned that that means the creation of a new pi bond. And at the head of each arrow, there's always exactly one atom that is becoming more negative. While at the far end of this arrow, this is the atom that is gaining electrons. It's becoming more negative. Well, since it started with a positive charge, it should now be neutral. If you start with a positive charge and you gain electrons, you become neutral. And now we can erase the arrow. As usual, notice that this atom in the middle of the arrow is not changing its charge. Only this atom at the far bottom, at the beginning of the arrow, is changing charge. And this atom over here, um, which is uh, at the end of the head, is uh, changing its charge. But this atom in the middle is not changing its charge because it's just losing this pi bond and gaining this pi bond. But let's double check. We always want to balance the charges. Well, the net charge on this molecule is negative 1 plus positive 1, which equals 0. And the net charge on our right-hand structure is negative 1 plus positive 1, which also equals 0. The charge is balanced. One thing to watch out for here is, again, there were no changes that we need to make on the negative charge on the nitrogen, because there were no arrows going to or from the nitrogen. Remember, only to make the changes that are dictated by your electron pushing arrows. That's one of the main purposes of using the redraw and modify technique. Uh, that forces you to only make the changes that you're forced to make by the electron pushing arrows. Try this example. We start by redrawing the original structure. I hope you're remembering to always put the double-headed resonance arrow in each of the problems that we're doing. We might as well practice using good notation. We should, we should always be using these double-headed resonance arrows. Notice that when I redraw the original molecule, I don't just redraw the original structure, I also redraw the electron pushing arrow. I, I encourage you to, to imitate that as well. Redraw the arrow as well. Now, where are the electrons coming from? The electrons are coming from the tail. The tail is on this pi bond. So we erase the pi bond. And there should always be an atom that changes its charge at the tail. Well, this is the atom over here that is losing the electrons. Uh, so that <coughs> should be becoming more positive. It started at 0, so now it should have a positive charge. Notice that this atom in the middle is not going to change charge because it's kind of both at the tail and at the head. It's just going to um, transfer electrons from one place to another. As always, there's only going to be one atom at the tail that's changing charge and one atom at the head that's changing charge. Now we can erase the tail of the arrow. You can see now the advantage of recopying the arrow because that gives you a chance to erase the portions of the arrow um, as you're going along that you've already dealt with. So we can see now that we've dealt with the tail. But I haven't erased the head of the arrow yet because we haven't dealt with that. Now what does the head of this arrow tell us? It tells us where the electrons are going. Well, the head of this arrow is in the middle of the sigma bond. That means that we're creating a pi bond. And we should always take care of the charge. There has to be one atom at the head that is becoming more negative, less positive. Well, this atom here is the one that's changing. It gained the pi bond. Uh, well, it started with a positive charge, so if it becomes one step more negative, it just goes to zero. And now we can erase the head of the arrow. Don't erase the head of the arrow until you've drawn in uh, not just the bond, but also 
the charge. Remember, our whole goal here is to get the charges right. So there's no point erasing part of the arrow until you've gotten the charges right. So here's the new correct resonance structure. As always, let's check that by looking for the net charge. The net charge on the left-hand picture is plus one, and the net hand, and the net charge on the right-hand picture is plus one. So that balances. Remember again that we're not trying to draw all the resonance structures now. There's lots more resonance structures here, but all we're practicing at this point is how to obey the commands of a single electron pushing arrow. Later on, we'll see how to draw the other resonance structures. Try this example. I hope you gave that a shot. Let's start by redrawing the structure. And again, we not only redraw the Lewis structure, but we also redraw the electron pushing arrow. Now we focus on the tail of the arrow. That tells us where the electrons are coming from. Well, it looks like these electrons are coming from this pi bond. So we erase the pi bond. And now we have to change, change someone's charge. Well, the atom that's losing that pi bond is this atom over here. Um, so that atom should become uh, less negative, more positive. Since this atom started at zero, if it becomes more positive, it ends up with a positive one charge. Now that we've got the charge right as well, we can erase the tail of the arrow. But we can see that we still haven't dealt with the head of the arrow. That tells us where the electrons are going to. Well, where are the electrons going to? Notice that the head of this arrow is pointing directly at the oxygen atom. What does it mean when the head is pointing directly at an atom? It means that the electrons are going into a lone pair. So we have to put a lone pair on this oxygen. Well, actually remember that we usually don't draw lone pairs. So even though we know that there's going to be a lone pair here, we're actually not going to draw it. But we can still change the charge. Actually, let me, uh, I won't erase the arrow yet. Um, so we know that uh, there's going to be a lone pair here. We're not going to draw it. But we can change the charge. This oxygen is gaining electrons, so it should become less positive and more negative. It started with a positive charge, so it should end up neutral. Now we can erase the head of the arrow because we've dealt with the charge. And this is our correct Lewis structure. Let's check the net charges. In the left-hand structure, we have negative 1 plus 1 net charge zero. And in the right hand structure we have negative one plus one. Net charge zero. That balances. Well this problem was to shake things up a little bit because the last few examples that we've been doing have been examples of moving one pi bond into another pi bond. So I wanted to go back and briefly review an earlier pattern which is a pi bond that goes into a lone pair. So here we went back and saw a pi bond going into a lone pair. Remember, you know you're forming a lone pair when the head of the arrow is pointing directly at an atom. Now, we usually don't draw the lone pair, but we still have to adjust the charge on that atom. If you wanted to draw the lone pair, that's okay, but people usually don't do that. We don't make any changes to the negative charge on this oxygen up top because there were no arrows going towards it or away from it. We only make the changes that are dictated by the arrows.